Alrighty. So, uh, first things first, um, language doesn't matter. You can run this in English or French. Um, you do want to make sure you turn autosave off, um, because that'll take up time while trying to save the memory card. Um, uh, actually apply the change, though. Don't be a dumbass like me. Um, I don't think rumble makes any difference on time. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people turn it off. I like it for timing for certain things. Um, a trick that's going to come in handy later, um, not vital to know for any percent in this, but uh, you will want, once you're, uh, once you're used to the routing, you'll want to have a file saved that is past the second stage of World 3. Um, and before you do a run, uh, you want to load that file. Um, and that is going to um, save us, I think it's about 15 seconds of time um, on the run. Um, let me get it loaded. I'm happy my um, my capture looks a little bit brighter. I adjusted the, the settings a little bit. So here I'll actually show what this is doing um, rather than coming back to it later on. So yeah, I just loaded this museum file. Um, this file is up to the second stage of museum. Um, and what that does for us once. Okay, so this shield right here that this guy's holding uh, usually, uh, you would have to come down here and grab a Robin Hood costume that's over here. Uh, you have to do a transform into this, run back up with this Robin Hood costume, and shoot that shield with a uh, with a plunger to get it to raise up. Um, if you load the file that already has the shield raised, so you just need to make sure you raise the shield and save the game. Um, if you load this file first, when you do your run, um, when you get to this point in the run, the shield will already be up, and you won't have to jump down, get the costume, and come raise it. So um, you can go straight from getting the token that you would get uh, over there on that scaffolding by the light bulb, and you can just come straight over here and go into the stage without having to get the Robin Hood costume. So that's the only thing we do pre-starting uh, the timer in this game. Um, the two things that you're going to want to do before your runs are shut off autosave and load that file up. Um, and then we can go ahead and start a new game. Um, timing for any percent starts um, when you confirm that you want to overwrite. So you can uh, go ahead and say yes here. Um, and then, or when you, sorry, not when you confirm, when you uh, confirm the okay here. So timing starts as soon as you click okay. Um, whoops, I apparently clicked buttons without meaning to. Uh... There we go. So yeah, timing would start right when you hit OK here. Uh, so, you know, if you were timing, it'd be three, two, one, go. And there's your timing start. Um, I didn't start my actual timer because, you know, this is going to take a bit longer than a run. Um, It'll sure be good to see my cousin, all right. Uh, first thing to know is to just skip through cutscenes. All the cutscenes are skippable. Um, I believe both A and B skip them. Uh, I usually just mash A and B. There's two cutscenes here. Skip them both. Um, and that'll get you into, uh, Monsters Fright and Magic 1, uh, aka the training level. Um, okay. Basic things to cover. Um, very, imp well, becoming less important as we do this, because there's less of the game that we actually are playing, but movement. Um, always be rolling. Always be rolling. Um, so you want to do a jump and then hit the roll button immediately after. How's it going, Mistaken? Um, rolling is the fastest form of movement for normal Scooby. So whenever possible, you want to roll. If you screw up a roll, Scooby will instead do a butt slide like this. That is bad. It wastes a lot of time because you have that long animation where you can't really do anything. Um, so there's a couple different ways of rolling. Uh, my preferred is I kind of do like a roll of my... Let me get my hand in the camera here. Kind of roll my finger. So I hit the jump button and then I hit the X button like... Oh my god, I'm so bad at keeping my hand in camera there. There we go. So I hit the jump button, and then I immediately roll my thumb off onto the X. So I just do like that. Uh, which helps to prevent accidentally um, butt sliding. Um, but yeah, you want to you wanna be rolling whenever possible. So you want to kind of go from a roll into another roll, like that. Um, if you get too quick with it, and you try to go a little early, your jump gets eaten, and then you'll butt slide. Um... So you just gotta, gotta get the timing down of exactly when to do the next jump and roll. 
And yeah, mistaken. There's a there's a 3D or a 2D version of the game, um, though it's a pretty much an entirely different game. <laughs> um, it really only shares like some minor things with this one. Um, so this is a very straightforward stage. We're just gonna roll through, skip the cutscene with Shaggy, keep rolling up here until you get to this clue. Uh, again, a cutscene skip. Um, you're gonna grab this clue right here. You're gonna, you can roll over to Velma, you can walk over to Velma, whatever feels more comfy, uh, and then give her the clue. Um, that will skip the cutscene again. That will open up this button, hit the button, skip the cutscene, that opens up the door. And then just go back to rolling on through, and you can just keep rolling down the hallways. Uh, you wanna try and stay tight, obviously. Shorter path is gonna be faster. Uh, slide down this hill and skip another cutscene. Um, when you're just learning, there's not a lot. Um, give me my GameCube controller. <laughs> no, I like my GameCube controllers. Um, when you're first learning, I, I, up until really recently, honestly, I just used the spring. It's a tiny bit slower to spring up here. Um, this is the intended way of playing the game, so there's no big deal here. Um, but you can, for a little bit of time save, if you're feeling frisky, you can jump up onto this projector and then jump from there up onto the ledge. So if I don't screw this up, this is what it'll look like. You kind of do a roll, you jump up there, jump up here. It's slightly faster than doing the trampoline. Um, then you just want to zip down this rail. Um, these things are finicky. Like, anything that you grab onto with Scooby is super finicky in this game. Um, I usually try to make sure I'm holding down the A button, but yeah, it's super finicky. Um, and then just keep rolling on through. Um... This one, there's minor shortcut here, but you can just jump across these if you are, um, you know, not feeling up to doing the jumps, but they're not that hard. Uh, if you walk off the second one just a little bit and then jump kind of late, you can double jump straight over there. Um, for starting out, I highly recommend grabbing this chili. So the food in Scooby um, is what's used for your life. Um, if you see at the top left there, I have three health medals. Um, you can get more health containers or health medals by uh, cooking food with Shaggy. Um, I highly suggest beginners learn to do this with five medals. Um, world record uses three. I'm second place right now. I use four. Um, or potentially five. I think I use five, actually. Um, okay. First actual trick. Um, it's not very big, but what you're intended to do here is kill all these rats. Uh, there's a little cutscene that plays. You go up, get a clue, take it to Velma do some platforming to get over to a button up here on the right and hit it. What we can do instead is if you ignore the rats, you can come over here and do box jump, they call it. So you can jump up right next to Velma and kind of share the box with her. Uh, I won't soft lock this game mistaken, but I will do some really interesting movement. And then you can jump off the box, do a pound, and you can kind of like temporarily land on these tanks. And then you can get a jump off of them. So I was kind of trying to show what it sort of looks like. I'm going to kill the rats, actually, so that we don't die. Um, that's another thing to mention. Dying is not super punishing in this. Uh, you will always restart the level, which isn't usually a lot of... Uh, I mean, it's usually time loss, but, you know, when you're first learning, it's not a big deal, so that's really nice. But, uh, yeah, you're going to get up on this box. You'll usually have Velma here, too. And then you're going to jump over here, do a pound if you need. You don't always need. And then you do two more jumps and a pound and you can land up here. Uh, alternatively, you can just come up to the base of these guys. It's a lot finickier, but you can kind of come up to the base, and, like, if you get it just right, you can get up on top there from here. I used to do it this way, but I actually went back to doing the box. There we go. Wow, that was it, but I didn't get my jump timed properly. Uh, let's see if we can do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, you can kind of just jump from the ground, too. The box is the easiest. How's it going, Ash? Um, but yeah, so box jump to the tanks, to the platform, and then we're just going to roll over and hit the button. All right, that button lets us exit the stage. Um, so you're just going to roll on up. You can ignore that clue. We don't need it. Um, one thing I do and I recommend you do is grab this cabbage. Yeah, I was going to say killing the rats is probably worth it for beginners. Good, good call, Sam. Um... I appreciate that you're here, because you can kind of fill in things that I'm missing. Um, yeah, I agree with Sam. It's probably worth killing those rats, because it is easier to jump off the box when the rats aren't there. Um, until you get more comfy with it. 
Uh, but yeah, I would make sure you grab that cabbage. With the cabbage and pepper, you can stop at Shaggy's Porta Kitchen right here um, and get a fourth health medal. Um, and then just leave. Um, you mash A to give him the ingredients and then mash B once you have the medal to exit. Um, I am not the world record holder mistaken. I'm second place right now. Um, the world record holder is Baz and Baz is just unfairly good at anything Scooby related for some reason. So um, we're going to try and catch him after this. I think we're going to make some world record attempts after I finish this. Um, I did discover some of the strats that we're using though. Um, when I learned this for the 12 hour challenge. Oh, Sam, yeah, no, Sam, Sam's not world record holder either. Now Baz, Bazralian is the uh, world record holder. So yeah, once you have your medals, you can just slide down this slide and you're done with the tutorial stage. Um, I recommend if you're trying to find spots to split, I usually split right when you confirm these screens. So when you hit the A button to continue there, that's when I split for my different uh, levels. And on to Chinatown. The first place we horribly break this game and where the old tutorial is very out of date. Um, so this is World 1, Chinatown. We're going to play exactly zero of the three stages. We are only going to fight the boss. Um, so I'm going to cover a few tricks here. Um, Sam, you, you need to get a, a run with the new tricks. They're, it's, they're really fun. Um, so... If you're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to preface this by saying, if you're going to do Fred launch, which I'll show you both, but if you're going to do Fred launch, you want to roll over here and then roll over to Fred and break up that conversation because it'll put Fred in the right uh, position for Fred launch later. It saves you a tiny bit of time. Then you're going to roll up here, jump up onto this ledge and jump up onto this awning. Now, what we're going to do here is kind of jump off some collision. So you want to get yourself in this corner, and I recommend angling your camera kind of directly. So, Sco so Scooby's running straight up. So I'm holding, I'm holding straight up on my control stick. Let me see if I can get that straight up on the control stick, right into the notch, um, and I kind of get the camera centered with Scooby. Um, what you're gonna try and do is this green sign right here. You're gonna jump off the top right corner of it. You're gonna jump out away from the awning that's right there, and then back towards it and if you do it right and it's going to take a little practice to get it but once you do it's not too hard um so you're going to jump straight up twice and then if you move just a little bit left you can catch the corner of that sign and jump off of it like that so that's the first step is getting off that sign um so again you want to come up center your camera you can use the r button to center it or you can use the c stick to adjust it a little bit double jump move a little left and you'll catch the edge Thanks, Mistaken. Um, once you get there, you can jump off to the right, is my recommendation, and then off the awning itself up onto the platform. So we're going to go up on the awning. And again, this is, this is a lot uh, easier than it looks, honestly, once you figure it out. So it's double jump a little to the left to catch the corner, and then you go right and out so that you can kind of come around that awning and jump off it. Um, once you're up here, uh, we can grab the coin. This usually requires beating the first stage of the game. But now we don't have to because we have the coin. How is it going, Flarp? Uh, so you're going to take your coin over here and use it to get the Kung Fu costume. The most broken costume in all of this game. Um, so, with these costumes, if you're not familiar with the game casually, um, these UV beams uh, destroy your costume. If you run through them, you lose them. And the developers, whoops, I did not mean to fall down here, though I will cover actually what to do if you fall down here, because there are some saves if you have the costume, because um, you would lose it usually coming back up here. So actually, let me cover that. If you get this costume and you fall down um, for whatever reason, uh, you're mashing buttons and you fall down, um, you want to come around to this side. My suggestion is not to go through this um, UV beam because it's slow because you'll have to uh, come back over and get the costume again. But to just do a double jump here and if you hold in towards the wall, um, I didn't do the extra jump, but you'll kind of touch that ledge and you can jump off of it again to get across to the other pier. So you can do a double jump. Okay. Or it's not going to work for me this time. It's really not a hard jump. Oh, there we go. There we go. 
and then you can get across. Debating what you want to play? This, clearly. Uh, I'm sure there will be several uh, mistaken. Alright, so we're going to do a trick here to get past these UV beams and this invisible wall that's right here. Um, this or this trick is uh, sign jump, or I, I don't know if there's an official name for it. I always call it sign jump. Uh, it's honestly one of the most frustrating parts of this, um, but it's not. It, it's pretty straightforward what you have to do. It can just be finicky. So you want to get behind the sign, face straight at it, right in the center. You're going to double jump, move a little forward, and then jump off the top. Uh, I think I just submitted that one, mistaken. So once you get that jump, you're going to move forward. So you're just going to do just like that. It's a good way to kind of practice it is double jump, move a little forward. And sometimes you just do that where Scooby kind of hovers over it for some reason and doesn't jump. Uh, but what you want is to get that jump like that. And then you're going to aim for right to the right of that wooden frame. I mean, I thought we already discussed this, Flarp. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to double jump your way up jump off to the right and then you should kind of land on an invisible wall and you can jump your way free and now you've broken out with the um scooby uh, karate suit which is how we break the game um a thing to note with this suit um yep have a good one mistaken uh this suit's fastest form of movement is jump kicking so similar to what we were doing with rolling um you want to hit the a button to jump and then instead of x you want to hit b to kick and you want to just do it repeatedly and fast. And Scooby will do, um, yeah, if you do it properly, Scooby moves like that. Which is, I think, Scooby's fastest movement in all of the game of any form. You can zip all over the place with it. I use two fingers often when I'm doing that one. Um, I will just... Well, it's You gotta keep moving with that too. But I will use two fingers and just kind of hit the buttons. Some people, I think, roll their finger. I sometimes roll my thumb. Um, so yeah, you're going to get out with the karate costume and come over to this forklift right here. So we just got out right here. I'll show that, you know, let me show the sign jump again, just to make sure I didn't go through that too fast. Um, cause this is an important trick, but yeah, get behind the sign here. I usually line my vision up a little bit, do your double jump. Hopefully you get a jump off the sign. If not, just go around it and start over, jump out there and then jump over the invisible wall. You're going to come on over to this forklift, get up on the back of it here. So now we need to do kind of like a a, a momentum jump um, from the roof of this. So we need to jump here, kick to land on this pillar that's right here, and then do another double jump to land on that trampoline. Uh, this is to set up a glitch. Um, so, whoops, I missed it. So yeah, you want your jump kick to land on that pillar, and then you just want to do a double jump. Once you get it, you'll bounce there, and that's all you need to do. Then you're going to come on over to this stairwell, head up to the right side, jump through this stairwell, because for whatever reason, it is not solid if it's not active. So you can just jump through it with uh, Karate Scooby. And then we're just going to hang on this ledge. So just double jump, hold your A button. That's all you need to do. Um, the glitch we were going for is now set up, the launch glitch. Um... So this glitch lets us skip straight to the boss door. So the boss door of the game is going to be right up here. Um, boss door is right there. Usually you need this awning down to get up there. Um, we are going to skip that using either Fred or Shaggy. So what this glitch is going to do is these characters are going to... Uh, whichever one we use is going to throw us backwards. And they're going to... Uh, do so at a weird rate of speed and something with that trampoline is going to cause us to get launched in the air when we hit certain objects. So with Shaggy, um, the setup is a lot more reliable to get you into the air. It is a little harder to get to the loading zone because Shaggy, we're going to have him throw us up this staircase and we're going to get airborne off of some of the collision back here. Pretty much everything back here sends us flying. So Shaggy's going to throw us up the staircase into something over there, and we're going to end up airborne. But we need to get all the way back over there to the loading zone. With Fred, we stand on this side of Fred. So Fred will throw us into uh, the collision back there, which is pretty close to the loading zone. Um, but 
Most of this does not easily launch you. Oh, good, good call, Sam. Um, so yeah, Sam pointed out, and before I continue talking about the launch, if you can't get the forklift jump, um, you can just come back around this way um, and climb up the uh, the front here. Um, though I don't know exactly how you go about that here. Am I missing something there? Slower but easier. Can you still do this? Oh, you can still do that jump. Okay, yeah, you can still do the jump. I didn't know you could do it in karate suit. So yeah, you can do the jump up the front there just like you were doing before. Same setup, pretty much. Alright. On to the launch again. So as I said, Shaggy throws us back there. We're going to have to get our way all the way over horizontally to the loading zone. Fred, he'll throw you over here. Um, a couple things that will launch you over here. There's a spot in this set of boxes that'll throw you airborne. I'm not sure exactly where it is. I think it's somewhere around here. Um, somewhere around this box slash this sign, like right in between them, will get you airborne. Or if Fred throws you way back here, there's a spot in here, and I'm not sure exactly where it is that'll airborne you. But it's finicky as to what will actually get you airborne with Fred. Um, Shaggy, in my opinion, is much more reliable. You don't even really have to um, pay attention to your lineup. You just have to start doing the glitch to get airborne with Shaggy. So I'll start with Shaggy, because Shaggy's easier, in my opinion. Um, all you're going to do is walk up to Shaggy. Make sure he's facing a direction. He, you don't want him to wave. If they wave, it kind of resets the glitchiness here. Um, and you just want to keep inching towards him. Um, and you're just going to keep inching lightly towards him. Just keep flicking the stick forward. And you'll notice Shaggy just launched me into the sky. Um, it's often not the first uh, time you do that that they launch you. It's probably because I took so much time standing there and talking that um, I got launched so high. Um, and then you see the stage loading and... Here, the R button will help to get your bearings, but uh, right over there in the top middle is where the loading zone is for the boss. Um, if you're going to do Shaggy launch, you really have to kind of learn what the stage looks like from above um, and look for the loading zone for the boss. It's a like a cone that spreads out. So you'll be looking for that cone. That's what you want to land in is the loading zone there. Um, but yeah, for Shaggy, you can just walk up. As I said, just once he waves, that kind of resets it. So you just keep inching forward. He'll keep pushing you a little further back, a little further back. You want to keep the stairwell behind you for the most part here. And I like to keep the camera facing the boss loading zone because it makes it easier to find because it should stay that way when you get thrown. So you get thrown. You find the loading zone. You can see it over there where there's that cone, the shadow. And you're going to have to do jump kicks to get there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Usually somewhere around there is good. And you can mash the R button to get your camera um, into a spot you can see. Because once you start jump kicking, you'll end up below the camera and you can't really use it anymore. Um, so you can use mash the R button to kind of get a feel for where you are. So the loading zone is right to the left of me. I'm actually behind the wall, but I'm going to come straight out um, rather than go into the loading zone. Um, so yeah, if you land in the loading zone, you just have to walk forward until you hit this door and you'll be sent to the boss fight. Um, I am going to cover the backup, too, because it is useful if you manage to get up here but not land in the loading zone. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go show Shaggy launch again. So again, we just want to walk over, make sure we can see straight behind Shaggy, and just start inching forward into him a bunch. Sometimes you'll get thrown a little, but not fully. But just keep inching forward, and eventually... Sometimes you'll pick up that clue, too. Um, I did not get enough height to make it to the loading zone, so we just have to go uh, back over to Shaggy again. He did wave, so we reset. But again, just keep keep poking Shaggy. That's the main thing that you need to do here, is just keep poking him. I think there's still a lot we really just don't understand about how this functions. There we go. That's a decent launch. Um, okay. It is kind of low, though, so I do have to start jump kicking. That should be enough. Yeah. And you can see that loading zone right next to me there. All right. Fred launch. I don't even know if I'm going to get this, but... So Baz's setup is usually get Fred facing this direction. So he's facing towards the boss door. 
kind of come down here by this bottom of the stairwell, do a jump to get up in front of him, and then it's just inching forward again. Um, I've never had success with his setup. Yeah, see, I never had success. So this, this is an example of what happens if you get thrown back, but don't hit the collision that launches you. So I recommend if you're going to do Fred launch to sli flip your camera around. So like get Fred facing this way and then flip your camera around. And again, you're aiming for like those boxes straight behind Scooby right now. Um, that sign right behind those boxes or somewhere back in those boxes in the back. But that's a really hard target to hit. So I usually go for the kind of the corner of those boxes where this lower box is jutting out right here. Um if I can even get a Fred launch. And you just kind of want to make a straight line between Fred and Scooby and that box, and then just inch towards him. Um, and I missed. I like having the camera reverse because you can see a lot better what you did wrong though. Um, you know, it's too far to the left there, so I need to be a little further right. This is probably too far right. Yeah, way too far right. Um, as I said, Fred launch is a lot finickier. You do have to get the lineup. If you get it, it's much easier to find the loading zone, though. That was some weird angles. What's up, Scooby -Doo? So Fred waves. So that's going to reset his throwing. So I'm going to aim for the sign instead of the boxes this time. There are. Okay. Nope. I do think uh, the direction Scooby's facing actually matters here, but it can be kind of finicky. Um, nope. And you could do it blind like Baz does and just be God. No. Um, I still don't know how Baz just lines this up so perfectly every time. I think his jumps must just be in the exact same position, so he's just lined up right for the throw. That was interesting. I thought I was on top of that building for a second. Nope. You can also just kind of brute force Fred, but I think, again, I think Shaggy's more consistent. You do have to jump kick your way to the uh, loading zone most of the time, whereas Fred, you can usually just angle the control stick and fall there. Like, right here. Fred put us right up next to it, so we can kind of... Nope, we missed. So you might be able to land up next to it with Fred... Um, I'm clearly not going to get Fred right now, so I'm just going to show you Shaggy again, and I'm going to say my suggestion is Shaggy. <laughs> um, again, Shaggy is not particular. Um, you know, I can be way off to the side here, and I will get a throw that gets me up high enough. And then we angle the control stick so I can find that loading zone. There it is. Um, sometimes it is hard to tell. Five, six... Seven, I think eight maybe. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, so what I'm using there as a gauge is like the background and how close it is to me. Um, so what I'm going to show you now um, is the f uh, the s the old method of getting behind this door. Because if you land up here, um, you have two choices. You can go back and do the launch again, which takes a quite a bit of time. Or, if you would like, there is a backup option that we used to use to clip through behind this door. It is kind of finicky, unless you learn, like, unless you really practice it, but um, it can be helpful if you don't want to reset runs or have to go back and redo the launch. Definitely not necessary to learn, though, because um, you can always just go redo the launch. Um, so what you're going to do, is you're going to come over here. And I usually recommend resetting the camera. It will always be the exact same because it's forced into a certain perspective there. So I get alongside the boxes. You can do this up on top of them too, but I find it harder. I get alongside the boxes here, reset the camera, and just walk kind of in line with that green border. And then you're going to punch. And if you get it right, um, it's finicky sometimes, but Scooby will punch through the wall. As soon as he goes through the wall, you want to jump and move back uh behind those boxes. How's it going, Master? Um, so, any questions, feel free to ask. I know you kind of came in a little bit in the middle here. But, uh, whoops. So yeah, if you fall down, you will have to do um, the launches again. Again, I recommend Shaggy launch. 
There we go. So once you jump through, you can double jump and kind of get behind everything here. That was really weird. I'm in the window. Um, we're covering how to skip the first world right now. Um, so you're going to punch through this wall. This is a backup strat here, Mash or uh, Master. You won't actually need this um, unless you want it. But um, this is the old way we had to do this skip. So, yeah, you can jump and end up behind the boxes just like that. You can kind of see Scooby poking out of the wall there a little bit. So if you get this, you're going to walk up and just, or right and slightly up until you kind of get stopped by the window. Um, and keep holding that direction on the control stick. As I said, it's like right and then a little bit up. Um, from here, you have to walk the seam or jump the seam. I jump the seam. So what you're going to need to do is jump straight up. And then jump upright so that you land on the other side of the window. And then you need to do it again where you jump up and jump right to land in the loading zone. So this is super hard if you're not practiced with it. Um, it does save you having to redo the launches though. So it's jump up, jump in and right, and I missed it. And if you miss it, you're just, you're back here. So um, again, I don't necessarily recommend learning that. But if you would like to learn it as a backup, you can. Um... I will maintain that Shaggy launch is just the easiest way to get into the loading zone, though. So again, just come up to Shaggy and just keep inching forward. Just poke him until he throws you into the air. Until Shaggy yeets you. There we go. Find your loading zone as quickly as you can and then start jumping towards it. Um, is my A button not working? I don't know why I could not jump there, but I could not jump in the air. Um, so again, he waves, so it resets, so we just keep inching forward. Again, it, pretty much it doesn't really matter your angle here. As long as the stairs are to your back, um, you will get launched into the sky eventually. And just keep poking him. That's probably good. Yeah. There's the loading zone right over there. There we go. You can mash R button to help get your bearings. I was actually not on the ground. Um, one other thing to note with that is um, next to that loading zone, there's actually a lot of invisible ground you can land on. It doesn't extend indefinitely, but, like, you don't have to land in the loading zone. You can land on this side of the loading zone, like the side that Scooby's currently on. Um, so there is a little bit more wiggle room than you might initially think. You don't have to make it all the way to the loading zone. There is no ground on the other side of it, though, so if you're gonna miss it, miss it on this end. Uh, where's the loading zone? There it is. You can kind of see it. I can almost just fall towards it here. We do have to do a couple jump kicks, it looks like. But yeah, you can see I'm landing, like, next to the loading zone there. And then we just walk left, which puts us in the loading zone. You'll get kind of trapped. You won't be able to leave it. And then just walk forward to the door. And that will take us into the boss. Alright. Boss of World 1. Very straightforward. Uh, first thing we need is 35 uh, Mubber. We can skip this cutscene. I'm just waiting so I can talk here. Uh, you want to collect 35 Mubber and get the Karate Suit. Uh, so you can come over here. Sh uh, Fred will throw out a thing of Mubber. Great, break those boxes and get some. Uh, come over to this corner. Roll into these and get some. Uh, come over here. Same deal. Um, and then break these boxes. Uh, there's some rats in them. And you should have 35 by then. Uh, and then come back to the machine and get your costume. Um... So this guy is hurt best by doing um, these energy shots, the Kamehamehas, whatever you want to call them. Um, you can get two of them per round if you're good. I am all right, so I will not be able to demonstrate those perfectly. I will be able to get a few of them for you. Um, there are There is a tutorial out there that actually has some pretty good setups for it. Um, I, will I will put the link to that in my video description once I get this exported to YouTube, but... Uh, yeah, reference that. I'm bad at this. Um, so pretty much you just want to get him in as few rounds as possible here. Um, again, as I mentioned, jump kicking is the fastest way to move Karate Scooby. So you want to do a lot of that to move around this battlefield quickly. Um, but what you want to do is get ready for him to come down the first time. Charge up a charge blast. Launch it. And then the goal is to kind of whoops, jump kick over with him and get another charge blast on before he goes away. And that's when you would get a double. So let me see if I can actually get one here. So you're going to get one. 
you're gonna kind of chase him over get another one you do have to hit the sections of his body with the blast for it to count the skeleton of him will not damage him so uh there we go i got a double right there um so as you damage him more it's harder and harder to do doubles um, once you get him down to a certain amount he'll start shooting energy balls at you like right there they're not really a big deal mostly they can be ignored um, as you'll know, I'm bad at getting the doubles. There's specific spots that, like, set him up to go certain ways, and then you can... Ooh, that was a double I don't usually get. Um, so he's gonna switch to having headlamps soon. I think after this round. Um, where he has UV headlamps to destroy your costume. Um, so you have to make sure you don't wait too long on your energy blast during these. Yep, right here. If you wait too long, you're gonna lose your costume. You can get doubles during this, but I I think I've only done it like once or twice. Somehow I did not lose my costume there. I was sure I did. Um, but yeah, this battle is pretty straightforward. Optimizing it is a lot harder than just doing it, but... Um, and there is a lot of time saved to getting these doubles because it can cut rounds off this fight. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basic of the fight. As I said, I'll link to the more comprehensive video of how to do that, um, because I'm just not great at it. And then we come up, uh, if you, uh, so you always can re-get the costume for free, Master. Um, that's a great question. Um, once you've paid the mubber at the machine, it will just give you the costume. So I actually should have demonstrated that, and I'll go back through that at the end. I'm gonna kind of do, like, a quick summary at the end. I'll probably do a run afterwards and just include it, um, as part of the tutorial. But yeah, if you lose your costume, you can just roll back over to the machine. Uh, that's something you missed earlier. When you're in Scooby form, rolling is your fastest form of movement. So you want to jump and then hit the X button immediately. Um, and ideally, you want to do this in quick uh, succession. That's your quickest form of movement as Scooby. Um, if you screw it up, you'll butt slide and you'll waste time. <laughs> um, and that just means you hit X button without jumping first. So this... This is one of the hardest skips in the game. Uh, we're going to skip all of the stages in World 2, just like we did in World 1. Um, the, this is two parts. or Well, it's three parts, I guess. Though the third part's pretty easy. The first is this trash can jump, which I am really crap at. Um, similar to the tutorial stage, you're going to jump up on this just like you did the box that Velma was on. And you can kind of just stand on the just the edge of it, just barely. Um, you're then going to jump off of it and try to get up on this awning right here. Um, so that's goal one, is just figure that out. I usually kind of put the camera somewhere around here. I do a jump up, and then I jump out to get some momentum and do a ground pound to get the last bit of height I need. Uh, this can be finicky, and it can take a while. I honestly had a harder time with that than I did with this second jump. How's it going, Harshtag? All right. So, our goal now, um, I wish there was like a first person perspective here. Our goal now is to get across this gap um, to the left of the statue of the guitar goal. Um, and we're going to jump over there and then up to the ledge where the back coin is. Um, the old strategy for this was really finicky. The new one's not too bad. So, I recommend standing somewhere around here in this bottom corner. Um, angling the camera so that that pillar um trying to figure out a good way to um rarg other way that pillar right there that's like right right there that pillar you kind of want it to be straight up from scooby when you're standing here so you can see it's pretty close to straight up from scooby um you're gonna run now you can run off of platforms just a tiny bit before you need to jump you're gonna run up and double jump out to that platform. Uh, when you hit that platform, do another jump, and I recommend just releasing the control stick right after you start moving on that jump, um, and you'll land on another piece of solid ground, and then you can double jump up to the coin. I, it probably sounds more complicated than it is, um, but this is, this is finicky, because you have to land on invisible collision that's hard to see. So the first piece is like, if you look at that pillar at the top corner of it, let me see if I can get like a pointer here. Um, I need a pointer of some sort. I wish I had thought I had to have a pointer. Um, 
Let me grab a pointer image off of the interwebs. Pointer. Cursor. Finger. That works. Perfect. Uh, save image. Let's just save it to the desktop for now. That will work. And add it to OBS real quick. Because I'm going to need to be able to point these out. Uh, my mouse isn't captured because I'm using this with... Uh, um, whatchamacallit. This is a capture card. Uh, so I don't think it can be captured there. Maybe it can. It could just be that I'm really dumb when it comes to OBS here. Alright. We have a pointer. There we go. We have a pointer. So yeah. Um, right... Let me shrink this down a little bit. Right there. There's some invisible collision you can stand on. And then there's some more collision. Um, let me see. So yeah, right here and right here at that corner. Um, so those are the two spots you kind of want to aim for here is this corner and this corner. Um, <laughs> so those are, those are what we're aiming for. Um, so again, you want to kind of get that pillar... So you can tell it's right at the it's right at the end of this rainbow piece here. So you can kind of use that to get an idea of where it is. But uh, we're gonna do this trash can jump, which, as I said, takes some practice. Jump up. I'm not even getting it right now. Yeah, that pointer is definitely better. Wow. Okay. There we go. Okay. Spin the camera. You can do this blind, and I have gotten to a point where I start doing it blind. But uh, I recommend spinning the camera when you first start. Uh, again, you're going to walk off the platform a little bit and then jump. So right there, double jump. I was too late. I said to walk off a little bit. I walked off way too much. Um, so again, we trash can jump our way up. Um, all right. We run out. We do a double jump. We miss it entirely. This trick is finicky until you're practiced with it. And I'm out of practice, so it's going to take a few tries to get this consistent. Wow. Wow. I don't know if the timing is just different because I'm on the Wii instead of the Wii U right now. But that that feels so different than I'm expecting it to. So, run, do a double jump. Don't, uh, you actually have to make it here. Yeah, it makes sense harsh because everybody's just trapped inside. So, you know, make some tutorials, learn some speedruns. Oh my god. There we go. So we jumped off the trash can. We spin the camera. There we go. So I got the first piece of collision, but I missed the second one. So I ended up in the wall there. Um, again, you just kind of got to get it. Um, you can just jump off that first piece of collision and jump straight up to the coin, but it's extremely tight timing. Um, it's much easier to use the second piece of collision as well. Yeah, right here is that second piece of collision. Um, you do have to keep jumping for it to work, but once you're on this, you can just chill out here as long as you keep jumping when you land. And then just double jump, and if you need, you can do a pound, and that'll get you up here with the bat coin. Um, this trick takes a while to learn. Uh, it is better with the second collision. The old collision was really, really, really rough to learn. I think my first time getting it in a run took me like 30 minutes to get that trick. Um, but yeah, you can just do that right there. I'm going to do it a couple more times just for, um, yeah, I'm probably just going to upload this raw as a VOD, honestly, Harsh. Um, there's some good conversation, uh, Master's floating around in chat, um, and I know Master wants to learn this. Uh, uh, Smash was, uh, given some, uh, tips and pointers, so there's some good conversation in there that I'd like to keep in, honestly. Um, and I'm just... I don't have time to edit it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can do this blind, as I mentioned, and I do sometimes now come up and just kind of do that, do a little jump and do the double jump and the pound and then grab the bat coin. So that skips, I believe, the first stage of the amusement park. What we're then going to do is a much easier trick that's going to skip the other two. So we're going to come over to this Mubber costume machine. 
And we're going to... We don't need any Mubber here. Um, we're just going to turn into Bat Scooby. Going to take a run over here towards the boss door. So the boss door is right up there. Um, now that I have a pointer. Boss door is right up here. You can kind of see the top of the arch right above my mouse pointer. Um, so we're going to um, pop in behind that. So we do that by coming over to these boxes. Um, you want to get up on the top box here. And then kind of get your camera set up so you're probably somewhere around here. So you're just kind of looking straight into the corner. Um, what you're going to do here is do a double jump. Which normally, Scooby floats down. But if he is going forward, he does... Uh, and he has enough height. He didn't have it there. Here, I'll actually show you it here. Scooby does like a glide. So we want to get a glide in this corner. So you get up on this box. You kind of jump twice and push into the corner like push right where these two textures meet so you kind of want to aim somewhere in here uh yeah i hear you harsh um museum i wish there was more skips on museum um so you want to try and get a, a glide if you don't get a glide just move back and go for it again and then once you get yourself where you're gliding like that um you want to angle straight in towards this, like, uh, the step-up platform thing that's going on here. This little slope. Um, and kind of wiggle the control stick back and forth. So, once you get it, you kind of want to angle towards that mostly and just wiggle the control stick back and forth. You'll go back to hovering and then back to a glide. Um, once you've got that, it's just a matter of finding the boss door. I just wanted to show that. So, again, you're going to... Get yourself there. Wiggle the control stick will get you up some height. And then what I like to do and what you, uh, is uh, when I start going into that glide, I shift my control stick just a little bit to the right. So you want to try and move. There's like an invisible wall there, and you want to end up on the right-hand side of it. And then you're going to glide sharply back to the right to find the boss door. So we're going to hover up. I'll actually do it this time. We're going to hover up. Right here, I angle up and right, and then once I go through the wall, I angle back and right. And this tube right here is the boss door. Um, so you just kind of got to find this tube, and then, uh, yeah, it's getting cold in and out, so you're only seeing bits of it. But you want to find this tube. Uh, nope, you don't need any button presses. Um, you hold A so that you can continue gliding, um, Master. Uh, so A button is what will keep you gliding, so you want to hold down the A button the whole time. Um, but yeah, you just wiggle the control stick back and forth, and then once you start kind of hovering again instead of uh, gliding, just shift your control stick more right, and you should make it past the invisible wall. Um, I'll actually go back and do that whole sequence one more time. Um, because this is such an important trick. Um, like, everything, th this saves a lot of time. You don't have to do any of the stages in this world. Even if it takes you, like, 15 minutes uh, to get this or 20 minutes to get this, like, you've probably saved time over going through all three stages. Um, especially because some of these stages are very long. Um, so, again, off the trash can. I don't need to do this because I already have the back coin, but off the trash can up here. Um, you can adjust the camera or you can leave it, whichever you're more comfy with, but you're jumping out to that collision. I think I'm actually more comfy not adjusting the camera at this point, because I started trying to do it blind as a joke, and I was like, oh, it's actually not that bad. There we go. And then you just jump off those two pieces of collision and jump up for your back coin. Roll your way over here. Again, you want to always be rolling. So A button, and then immediately hit the X button. Uh, if you screwed up, you'll butt slide, and you'll know you screwed up. You missed your jump. Get your bat costume. I don't know if it's faster. I need to time it. If it's faster to just walk over, or sometimes I jump up here and glide my way to the boxes. Um, and then, again, wiggle the control stick. So all I'm doing is holding A. Here, let me see if I can get a good camera on what I'm doing here so you can see. Whoops. If you get stuck here in the boxes like this, just kind of fiddle around with the jump button and the control stick. Eventually, you can get yourself out. There we go. But yeah, get up on top of the top barrel. Let me get my control stick here so you can see what's going on. And it's just jump. I didn't get the glide, so I got to reset. Um, nope. 
Alright, if you're not getting it, sometimes it's best to just step back a little bit and try it again. Wow. I'm not usually this bad at getting it. It might be because I'm, like, in a weird position right now. There we go. So, yeah. There we go. Once you're in, all I'm doing is just wiggling the control stick back and forth. Um, you want to keep mostly up pressed, but wiggling back and forth. And here I switch to sharper right and then back to the right left until you find that tube. Or right and down, I should say. If you get stuck stuck, yeah, you can load your last autosave. Um, you also uh, can just break the boxes um, and go... Um, oh, I've done this before. Um, you can load the, uh, load the boxes and go back to the mystery machine and use that to reload the... Uh, area, but that's really annoying. Try not to break those boxes. You need those boxes. <laughs> um, Alright, so we're on to Guitar Ghoul. Um, Guitar Ghoul is one of the most frustrating fights. Uh, there's some R there's definitely some RNG here. There's also just some like performance here. Um, so the goal of Guitar Ghoul is to get these spiders to break the mirrors and then hit him with the spiders. Um, it always takes three rounds to beat him, um, and the third round is annoyingly long and annoyingly RNG based on which spiders are even going to be available for you to hit. Um, you can make it quicker and easier uh, with a trick at the end of each round, so I'll show you that. Um, what you want for the trick, and it's kind of going to rely on RNG to set it up, is you want two spiders next to each other um, to finish him off with. One spider, you hit into the Guitar Ghoul. The next spider you hit in between the two rounds, and that spider will break some of the mirrors that are coming down for the next round, um, before they're down. Um, it's not as critical from round one into round two, but round two into round three, you really want to get it, because round three takes forever if you don't have it. So, what you want to do is just spin those guys into the Guitar Ghoul. Right here I have a good setup for it, I have two in a row. Um, so the first one into him, the second one, and I timed it wrong. It's kind of a finicky timing, but you want to get that where the second one uh, gets hit just in time to break those mirrors. Um, if you look at the ground, you'll see the shadows on these spiders. Oh, I did not know that. So, uh, Mash pointed out there's a small chance that the spiders don't even spawn on the third phase. Um, but yeah, um, you can collect these Scooby Snacks if you need for uh, health refills during the battle. Um, you can also jump on the spiders to launch them, but that's a lot finickier. Um, yeah, I'm not good at it. So, here, we're gonna try and show you the, the quick kill. Or not quick kill, but the quick round, I should say. Once they're on the ground, you can't do anything with them, so you might as well kill them. I'm just trying to clear as many mirrors here so that I can show you this trick. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell if there's a mirror in front of him or if you're imagining it, too. Let's try it. Okay, so you can see right there, some of those mirrors broke. Not as many as I would like, but some of them broke early. Which, since some of these mirrors take two hits, um, is just a really nice thing to have happen. Um, also, this last round just takes forever if you're even just a little bit slow. He'll go into spots where you can't hit him for, like, 20 seconds. It's super frustrating. Uh, that low beam will kill any low spiders. Um, so there we go. That's that's the death of the Guitar Ghoul. And I'm going to exit once so that I can restart that fight and try and just show you it without, you know, talking and faffing around and such. Um, so you'll get to see the glide again. I won't do the bat coin uh, jump, but I'll do the glide. Um... But yeah, I believe you can... Let me double check this. Uh, if you come up here, I believe you can load another stage if you need to get the boxes back. So you can come to the Mystery Machine, load Chinatown 4, which is the boss of Chinatown 4, for example. And then go back to get those boxes back if you do happen to break them and you need them to glide up. Yeah, then you just exit the level. And that'll put you back into the... Um, into the world two with everything reset. So if you if you break the trash can accidentally, or you break 
the uh, barrels and boxes accidentally. You can do that to kind of reset the world. But you will have to reload everything, so it takes some time. Um, on the bright side, if you already got the bat coin and then you broke those boxes, you won't have to re-get the bat coin, at least. Um, you will have to uh, roll all the way back over here. But you'll already have your bat costume unlocked. Um, so we're going to... Just once more, do this little float up over here. Nope. So, that's... Okay, that's something I don't think I mentioned, but... Part of why I'm not getting this sometimes is I'm not moving enough into the corner. So, with your two jumps here, you want to be moving deep into the corner. And then keep holding the direction, and that's what'll get you the glide. Like, um, if you just jump straight up and then push forward, like, you probably won't get the glide. Um, I find most of the time... Oh my god, we got stuck again. Uh, again, just fool around with the camera and mash the jump button a bit. And, yeah, mash the jump button and mash the camera buttons and you'll eventually get out. But uh, you kind of want to move into the corner as much as you can um, to get that glide. There we go. And then just wiggle your control stick. You can hear mine going. Hold right and up. And then down and uh, right. And that should get you to the loading zone. And now we're just going to do the battle. We're just going to just do it straightforward. Um, I recommend spinning the same direction as the outermost layer of mirrors that you have, or the innermost layer of mirrors you have broken, because that's how you're going to get the best shots at him. Um, so, like, you know, this one will open up a hole, which I can then shoot that spider at. Um, I did miss him, but this means I might get the early. So, yeah, we broke some mirrors there. Uh, I missed the spider completely, somehow. Uh, also, when he is in the air, which you'll see a couple times, he's completely untouchable. Um, so right there, he's completely untouchable until he comes back down. Which is super frustrating when you have all the mirrors broken, and then the spiders that are on the ground get... Um, I don't even know how I broke that. Um, oh, that's the other thing. The spiders that cause the mirrors to break don't actually have to hit the mirrors. They just have to get hit. So I guess my spin was timed well enough that they broke it. Um, but yeah, he'll get really frustrating where he'll be in the air and you'll just need one spider, but he'll be in the air too long and that spider will then uh, hit the ground and you can't use it anymore. For the glide, it can be easier with D-pad strats. Okay, I've never actually used the D-pad for that, but that is good advice. So uh, Summer Sunset says, uh, you know, the D-pad can be helpful there for the glide if you're having trouble with it. But yeah, you can see how long this third round can go if you don't do it quickly and efficiently. Um, you can, and I'm gonna get stuck probably in an even longer round because I'm not gonna get a good shot at him, and he's just gonna he's gonna pop down for like half a second and then go up forever here. Um, waiting for my opening. I did get him. Okay, so I got lucky there, but he was about to pop up for a long time. All right, so that's World Two, and the World Two boss. Um, Pretty much World 1 and World 2 are just skip to the boss, kill the boss, move on. World 3 is exactly the opposite. We have basically no skips in World 3. Um, so we got to play this as is. Um, again, skip the cutscenes. So all you're going to do is follow these Scooby Snacks up. Uh, take a mild detour here to talk to these guys and just mash the A button. That puts Velma into the spot she's supposed to be in. Uh, it'll save you from having to wait for her walk. So you're going to mash that and as soon as that conversation's done, come get this clue. Don't wait for her to walk, just go get the clue. Uh, roll back to Velma and give her the clue. Um, I agree 100%, Sam. Um, the uh, GameCube controller notches are super useful. Um, I'm not use used to the PlayStation D-pad, but uh, apparently that's really useful as well. Um, but yeah, we're just going to roll on over here to World 1, or Level 1, I should say, of the world. Um... This world, or this level, um, let's see. Um, so you're gonna skip the cutscenes as normal. Uh, the important thing in this level is we need to collect 100 Mubber, um, before we get up to where Shaggy's at. Um, so, uh, I'm using NTSC, um, Sam. Uh, but, um, so yeah, we need to collect 100 Mubber, the fastest way to farm Mubber in this game, and this is really the only place where you have to know how, how to do it, is to bounce repeatedly on enemies without touching the ground. 
So again, rolling is the fastest form of movement. So we're going to roll on through, do a jump here. Uh, you can just roll past that spider. Um, we want to get over to these pterodactyls that spawn. Um, okay, I mentioned this really early on, but grabbing things can be really finicky sometimes. I don't know why. Um, really make sure you hold on to the button after the double jump. So you jump, uh, jump, double jump, and hold the A button. Um, it's, I don't know how many times I've jumped forward thinking I was going to grab that vine, and I am just off into the pit. Uh, you can skip this cutscene. I'm just letting it roll here. This is where we're going to farm Mubber. You don't need to hit 100 here, but you want to get really close to it. Um, but repeated bounces off enemies without hitting the ground is what will get you Mubber the fastest. So we want to just jump up, and then we can just hold the A button here and just kind of bounce between these two with the control stick. Um, sometimes they get really obnoxious with how they move, but uh, that was a really good farm. We got more than 100. We're good to go. Um... We can just roll through this guy. But yeah, you can get less than 100 and just kind of collect as you go from enemies. Um, but for the most part, these stages are just going to be follow the Scooby Snacks after that. Um, you can get a weird glitch here. I'm going to talk about this. I don't know if I can actually trigger it intentionally. So these slopes like this that Scooby slides down, if you hit them, I think it's like just at the very edge of them, and you jump, you'll get launched at hyper speed. Um, it's just something to be aware of because it can catch you off guard and you can fall into the void um, if you're not careful. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Um, it might actually be useful to do intentionally if you can do it consistently, but I don't think anybody can. Um, and falling into the void here is actually really bad. Um, this stage takes forever to get back through, so you lose a lot of time if you fall off the stage. So we're just going to jump over to these slopes and slide down them. Uh, I think NTSC is generally faster in most games because it runs usually at 60. Um, but I don't know on this game. Uh, okay, so let me let me answer this while we're here. So Sam Ash says there's slight regional differences. Scooby's roll is shorter on the PAL version. Um, so you can't do the skip I'm going to do in the next level. Okay. Um, I'm going to cover that alt strat actually, Sam, because I, I think the alt strat's not too hard um, if you do the right setup for it. Um... And I think for a beginner learner, it's nice to have that option. It's not that much slower, and it's not... Uh, it's, it's I think it's honestly easier than doing the chimney roll, in my opinion. But, um, but yeah, continuing at the stage here. Um, we're going to do, yeah, the area with the knights, Summer. So you can ignore this guy. I usually roll right through him. Uh, just watch you don't fall off the edge. Uh, you can do a little jump skip here where you just kind of jump over. It's not really a big skip, per se, but... It's a little shortcut. Um, the fastest way to do these platforms, these platforms crumble. So be careful and do not fall into the pit. Um, I would say when you're starting off, don't do these rolls. I'm going to do rolls here. Um, they're risky. If you, so I don't think I covered this, but if you jump once and hit X, it's going to be rolls like that. If you jump twice and hit X, he ground pounds. If you accidentally ground pound here, you are going to fall off the stage and have to redo from the very start of the stage. So be very careful if you decide to roll here. Um, so you're going to jump. You can roll if you want. Just make sure you're actually landing on the ground before you try it again. Because uh, you might be getting a double jump without realizing it. Um, like right there, that was a double jump. And then we can just jump over the arm of that. Just make sure you get that clue and uh, slide down here. So yeah, like when you roll like that, if you don't stay on the ground long enough, you're technically in your second jump. So you might think you're in your first and pound there into the abyss. I've done it plenty of times. Be very careful if you decide to do rolls there. Um, again, vines are vines. Are vines. Um, it's very easy if you get anxious to miss those entirely. And then we're just going to go left here and jump up the platforms. You can pretty much just kind of hold the direction and jump. These ones crumble. Uh, you can wait out the poison blast, or if you time it right, you can just hopefully just get by um, without having to wait. If you do fall and you're, like, right here, you can pretty quickly just do some quick jumps to get up here. And then you can uh, come back up. If you're any more than probably these first two platforms, you're probably better off just going to the bottom and coming back up, though. Um, 
Also, thing to note for beginners in this stage, which I don't think I was noting earlier, there are some extra Scooby Snacks if you start losing life. Because again, dying or falling off in this stage is bad. It wastes a lot of time. So like, there's an extra Scooby Snack right here. When you hit the ground on this platform, you can go right, grab it real quick, and come back left um, if you're low on life and worried. Um, and it doesn't waste much time to go right and get it right out of the bat and then start climbing. So um, just knowing where some of those are is really helpful. Um, this game is cursed. Fair. Um, all right, this jump, for whatever reason, has been really finicky for me recently. Don't fall. Um, and then just roll through the spiders, climb up here, a couple more falling platforms, and then you're going to be at Shaggy. There's a little cutscene here. Now, be careful what direction you're holding on the control pad. Um, if you're holding up left and you skip through the cutscene, you might think that you can hold the direction the uh, loading zone is. Um, so let me get the pointer out here. So you might think this this is the loading zone we're trying to go to. You'll move up, the cutscene's gonna happen, you're gonna try and skip it. If you hold the direction for where you think the loading zone is, uh, you're gonna walk right off that ledge and fall to the bottom. So be very careful what direction you're holding or just wait half a second before you hold the direction out of this cutscene. You'll see this in a sec. Um, so like, you'd think holding up and right would keep me towards the loading zone. But it doesn't. It puts me right off that edge um, because the camera flips. So just be careful about that. Uh, you're going to move into this loading zone and skip the cutscene. Um, and then right here is where we use up the 100 mubber. Um, as I said, you don't have to necessarily have 100 early on. There's a couple of those pterodactyls you saw along the way you can get some extra mubber off of. And you have these three boxes right here, which will give us uh, a little bit of mubber. I actually didn't count how much that was, and I probably should have. Um, but, uh, there's a little bit extra mubber there. If you're, like, hovering in, like, the 90 range, like, you're fine. You can come up and just grab those boxes. Um, but go ahead and build your bat costume. Um, there's a couple optimizations in this flight, but, um, honestly, you just need to get from platform to platform. When you're just starting out, that's the big, uh, goal. There is a, um, there's lots of extra health if you need it. Um, I highly recommend if you need the safety health, take it. There's a Scooby Snack right there, which loses you a little bit of an optimization, but you can grab that one. And there's a few others I'll show you along the way. But you're just going to hop into this air current, double jump and hold A to kind of get up to the top of it. You don't have to be all the way up top. Um, the fastest option here is cutting it just close enough, and we're going to fly right next to that turtle, um, is what we're aiming for. So they intend you to go into that air current. You don't need to. Just jump off the turtle, hit a double jump and hold it, and glide out towards this volcano. And then once you're in this one, um, we're going to glide up and glide on over to the spider platform, ideally. I didn't make it high enough for that. Oh, I did, okay. Um, just watch they don't knock you off if you end up up here. You can kill them. How many different costumes are there? Okay, there's three costumes in the game. There is the... Uh, bat costume, the karate costume, and the uh, kung fu costume, or the uh, Robin Hood costume. Uh, there's three upgrades to the costumes as well. We do not touch any of the upgrades in any percent. They're too slow to get. Um, we use all three costumes um, only because the game requires us to use the Robin Hood costume. The Robin Hood costume is basically useless um, from a speedrunning perspective, but we get it because you need all three for the final boss. Um, and you need it in the third stage of this, uh, of this world to get through the world itself. There's a couple spots where they require you to shoot targets with plungers, and you need the costume for it. Um, it's a really shit costume. It's really slow movement. You can only walk with it. There's no fast form of movement with it. Um, but as I said, if you're a little low on life, you can drop down there and grab that Scooby Snack. Uh, and then you're just going to jump past this poison up here to this clue. And then just yeet yourself off the ledge towards the volcano. Um, and then kind of get the other volcano in sight because it's hard to see in that uh, cloud. Fly on over to it. And you don't really need a high boost off this. You just need a boost of some sort. And then you can fly to the final island. Um, if you're low on life, off to the left. You got a Scooby Snack right here. It's pretty quick to get. Um... 
I highly recommend just knowing where those are because, again, dying is very costly in this. Um, so you're going to come to the right and just climb up the side here. And we're going to do one minor skip at the top, but other than that, we're just going to platform up, grab that clue. All right. So on this last turtle right here is where we're going to do a skip. So I'm going to show you it without the skip first, but... Um, so usually what you would do is, casually is come up here and then walk over there. If you walk over there, a cutscene triggers. Uh, you need certain clues specifically, Master. Um, so I didn't really cover that in the first two worlds because we don't need any of them because we s just glitch our way to the bosses. Um, so the way the clues work is the clues open up different areas of the uh, hub world in each world. Um, so you need, and then uh, Velma requires certain clues to unlock the boss door as well to solve the mystery. Um, the clues that you need in World 3, you will get. You don't have to actually really think about them. They just get collected um, because they're, like, the clues that are vital to solving the mystery are kind of, like, basically unavoidable. And I think that's done on purpose. But, like, if you beat the three worlds, you should have the clues you need to solve the mystery. I believe the uh, one I just collected uh, here was uh, one of those such clues. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that once I'm in the auto-scroller, because um, that's coming up. But once you get to this turtle, what you want to do is bounce off of him, do a double jump, and then just coast along, or like glide out to the left. Um, actually, I'm going to get my pointer real quick to show you where you're aiming for. Um, so yeah, you want to kind of glide out around this platform and over to that white hole in the wall. That's where we're aiming for. Um, you can just come up here and jump off, but then you have to skip a cutscene that you wouldn't otherwise have to. So we're going to jump, we're going to do our double jump, and we're just going to glide straight over towards it. It'll look like you're not going to make it. You'll be fine. Um, you can be extremely low and still make it in here. All right. Auto scroller, just dodge the fire breathing pterodactyls. Um, and the patterns on the pillars are the same every time. Apparently the pterodactyls move the same way every time. If you do, I've never had that luck. I don't know how they move. I just kind of try to avoid them. Uh, and their hitboxes are kind of weird. So, like, sometimes you'll get hit unfairly. And other times you'll be sure you got hit and you'll be safe. Um, you just kind of got to do it a few times to get the feel for that. Um, but, yeah, it's right, left, left, right, and then middle. Uh, you have plenty of time with the arrows to uh, avoid. You don't have to do anything here except move the control stick. And just don't run into the pillars. If you run into the pillars, you have to redo the auto-scroller. So don't run into the pillars. Uh, you can skip the cutscene, and we've beaten level one. So the gliding is crazy, to be honest. It's it's fun to watch. It's really really simple to do. <laughs> um, all right, we have a couple minor skips or minor like optimizations here and uh, time saves. So just mash on through this. Um, so this dinosaur bone is one of the required items uh, to solve the mystery. Um, so yeah, that, that was the one we got, like, was basically unavoidable. Um, so you want to mash your way out of that and then immediately go to the stairwell. Um, you would think following these Scooby Snacks is the fastest method. It is not. So we're just going to go the other way. Um, it's very easy also to screw up your rolls on the stairs and end up butt sliding. So don't feel too bad if you end up butt sliding there. Um, and we're trying to get that Robin Hood coin. Um, so the intended way... And this is why you would follow the Scooby Snacks. So to come over here to this ledge, um, jump onto this planet, jump up here, and grab the coin. What we're gonna do for the speed run um, is you come up the stairwell. So let me get back. Here's the main stairwell. You go to the right instead of the left. Um, and what I suggest, what uh, it depends how comfy you are with it. It doesn't save a lot of time. So you know, uh, and it's risky because if you do fall. Uh, you lose a lot of time having to come back up the staircase. So do this with your own, um, you know, like uh, at your own risk, essentially. But you can jump off of this railing. Uh, and right there, you'll see why you want to be careful with it. Because I didn't land on the railing and I fell all the way down. And that's a lot of time loss. More than I saved by not going and doing it the intended way. But what you do is you jump off the railing and don't fall. I'm demonstrating, clearly this is intentional to demonstrate what not to do. Um, there's the staircase. I always have trouble refining the staircase. 
All right. So, you jump on the railing, and then you jump onto the planet. Master, thanks for the follow. Um, so yeah, you can just kind of jump on the railing, jump on the planet, and then jump up. Again, don't fall off like I keep doing there. Um, I think it's because I'm trying to do it slow and show it. Unmasked does have terrible physics sometimes. Um, you get used to them. There we go. So you jump here, and you jump here. Though, it's actually really annoying. Sometimes you'll hit, like, a little invisible ceiling if you jump quickly from here. So you gotta watch, like, right there. You kind of get stuck on this invisible ceiling. So you kind of want to get your height out before you come over and collect your coin. And this is where we get the payoff from the setup early on. Uh, so as I mentioned, the intended thing that you're going to have to do if you didn't load a save file is fall down to the bottom and go to that uh, costume machine right there, become Robin Hood, and then you're going to have to come back up the staircase, back off over towards those Scooby Snacks, and into the next level. But as long as you... Whoa, what did I do? There we go. Uh, I gotta get rid of my pointer. There we go. As long as you um, set up your file properly in the beginning, you should just be able to jump over here, roll on over, and the shield will already be up for you. Um, again, if it's not up, you gotta go down, get the costume, shoot it with a plunger, and it'll get put up. Um, and then you can just jump on into uh, level two. Um, level two... Level two is... This is the really awful level um, for a lot of runners. This is my least favorite level. Um, I lose so many runs to this stupid level for various reasons, uh, mainly because hooks are the worst physics in this game, um, and they will screw you over every time. So the intended way here is extremely long. No matter what you do, you don't want to do the intended way. Um, you would have to collect enough mubber for this Robin Hood costume, which is 100. Then you have to build it, you have to shoot every last one of these stupid shields, and then platform across the room. That is insanely slow. Um, I'm going to show you two methods to get around it. Um, the first, um, you only have so many attempts at. The second, you have unlimited attempts, but it's a bit harder. So the first um, is we're going to try and get up where this carrot is, on top of this little chimney, and then jump across to that uh, glass case, and then we can go around the top and uh, hit a button, and that'll save us from having to put the shields down. Um, to do that, we need to take this um, soldier dude here and jump off his head. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to try and lure him, and then we're going to jump onto this railing. Um, once he gets close enough, we're going to do one jump onto his head, and then bounce up and do the second jump, and if we need, a ground pound to kind of get up onto that, uh, the top of that chimney. So... You want to wake him up. You're going to come back over and get on the fence here. Um, he can still hit you on the fence, unfortunately. But yeah, you kind of want to lure him over. Um, avoid his stupid smash attack. Okay. Get on the fence. Get on his head. Jump and then ground pound. Um, you can get hurt by that poison blast, so be careful in the middle there. Um, but yeah, let me show that again. Um, the reason you have unlimited attempts is because you will kill him eventually. And then you have to leave the stage and restart the stage to, uh, do it again. Uh, that poison can also knock you off, which is really unfortunate when it happens. Um, and then we're gonna do a jump across to that case. Um, this is another case of it's a, a little bit of a tight jump, but it's not too bad once you get used to it. Um, you just have to keep in mind, Scooby can walk on platforms longer than it looks like he can. Um, and I'm going to put the camera in a spot that kind of shows that. But he can walk on air for a little bit before he's actually not on a platform anymore. Um, so we're going to run, do a late jump, do a second jump, and then if you need, do a ground pound to get the last little bit of distance. So uh, we'll wait for the poison. We'll do a run. You can see how far off the platform I get before um, I had to do a pound there. Um, it's kind of crazy how far off you can go, honestly. Um, and then we're just going to jump on up here and just start rolling. Just roll. And right there, I screwed up a roll. But again, just whenever you're in normal Scooby, you want to be rolling. We're going to roll till we can hit this button. Um, once you hit the button, jump off, do a roll, 
and just roll into the chimney to the next section of the stage. Um, but I'm going to show you um, the other method. I did want to reset the stage real quick. Um, just so you see it kind of fresh and raw. This is the faster method I'm about to show you. Um, you have unlimited retries as long as you don't die um, trying it. Um, how's it going on Netflix? Scooby's pretty awesome. This game's pretty fun. Um, Alright, so this is the chimney roll or fireplace roll or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's finicky. Um, it takes some getting used to. Um, Scooby can kind of roll up certain walls in this game because the physics in this game are broken. Um, if you had learned the, if, if you were around before we learned how to skip all of World 1, you'd be kind of prepped because you'd be used to rolling up walls from the one stage. Um, but, uh, you're not. You can stun that guy if you want. Some people jump off those boxes. I break them. Um, what you're gonna do, don't get hit by him. You're gonna get in this corner, face the wall, and roll. And then, you kind of have to, like, so you kind of saw what I did there, but you roll up the wall, you shift your control stick sharply, uh, like, directly along the wall, do a jump, and do a ground pound. And you can get up on this ledge here. I'll show it again. So that's just step one. Um, that's the easy of the two. So you roll, jump, ground pound. Um, and this is pretty easy to practice. Um, once you get that down, you have the harder of the two. So we're going to roll up there. Um, let me get my pointer again. Up there on this ledge is the button that we hit already. You can usually see it glowing red because, in fact, uh, you might be able to see. I, I don't know if it's actually up there right now glowing red or not. I don't know if resetting the stage fixed that or not. Um, but we need to roll to that. So we're going to roll up this wall. The issue is we need height and distance here. So you kind of have to do some funky control stick maneuvers. Um, I line myself up kind of in between. I'm going to get the pointer out. I line myself up in between this line of the bricks and this line of the bricks. So I kind of get right between them and face straight into the wall. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do, you're going to hold up on the control stick, straight up, roll up the wall, and immediately after you start the roll, you're going to shift the control stick to the left a certain amount. And I, eh, let me do it so I can kind of tell you how much it is, but it's like, if I remember correctly, it's not all the way to the up left notch. Um, actually, it might be further than the up left notch. Yeah, I didn't make it there. Um... Sometimes, if you know you didn't make it, you can kind of back out of it. Um, so let's try this again. Yeah. Like, there I did not get what I needed. Uh, you'll see it. It's a very different look when you get the height and distance. Um, but you kind of have to, like, do the roll and then roll your thumb over to the right direction. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going all the way... There we go. Let me get this up. So, I'm starting here at up, and I'm going all the way over to, like almost holding left on the control stick like almost left in like a circular just motion um this trick took a while for me to get um if you get it though you'll be able to ground pound up here next to the button don't jump off like i just did like an idiot um and then you can hit the button this is the quickest and uh you know you have infinite retries of this pretty much but just run into the wall do a roll i didn't shift fast enough as I said, if you realize you don't have it, you can kind of get back and save yourself some time loss, but um, that's not it either. Also not it. Nope. Oh, that one was close. It was, I didn't think it was going to make it, but I was like, maybe. Yeah, this can be finicky. Yeah, that one's too low. I got really horizontal, but no height. And that's not going to make it. And I'm probably going to die here. No, okay. Alrighty. Alright, I'm having trouble with this right now. After doing it like three times. Alright. Again. Kind of line somewhere in between those two. There we go. Oh my god, I had it. 
Um, I could have saved that with a jump there, because I did actually land on the ledge. Um, nope. So this is kind of finicky. I personally recommend the other one when you're first learning, but um, this is this is faster. So if you're going for fast strats, this is this is the strat you're gonna wanna figure out. I don't know what I'm. Well, I'm not getting enough distance, is what it is, and I know that. I'm just not sure why I'm not getting enough right now. I think my angle's a little wrong. Yeah. I'm a little late on rolling the control stick over. Um, so again, this is this this is funky physics at its finest, and it's super frustrating sometimes. Yeah, we died. That's fine. Again, dying is not super time loss. It just resets the stage, and this one is a pretty short reset. Um, puts you right back at the beginning. You roll a couple feet over and just re go for it. Though having like three of those knights down there is annoying. There we go. Oh my... Wow. This is not like me. Um, if you couldn't tell, I'm a little rusty. I did show it successfully at least a few times before I started failing it horrendously. Alright. So we're gonna go back to the alternate one for now. Because that one's just not cooperating. So again, um, for this one, wake him, lure him over here a little bit. You do have to wait for him to come over, which sucks. Jump on this. Whoops. You actually do have to land on it. Jump on his head, jump up, and do a ground pound. I like the carrot strat. You also get a carrot that you can use for a metal, for a health metal. Um, which is useful for caveman. Um, I highly, highly recommend going five health medals uh, when you're learning this game. Uh, if you go three... Um, a couple of the bosses are going to be frustrating, and Caveman is going to be a nightmare. Um, guaranteed. Highly recommend five. You'll have a much better time. Um, so yeah, once you hit the button, come down here and just head into the fireplace. And we get to the worst physics in the game, the hooks. So you're going to head left, you're going to jump up, break these boxes. These damn hooks are awful. You will come to hate them. Um, everything about them is evil. Um, so you can skip this one with a jump, or these two with a jump and then a pound. Um, I am really bad at skipping it, though. I usually swing and throw off of them. Um, so you have to hold the button to grab onto them, and then you hold the control stick to swing. The angle you come off with should be done, uh, properly. Um, like, you think it would be consistent, but it's not. Um, and especially if you do it early, your direction can be all over the place. You can easily not grab them when you think you're going to. Um, you do have to be holding the A button to grab them. Uh, how are health medals earned? Okay. So you can see in the top left here, I've got four health medals. You start the game with three. Um, every time you pick up food throughout the game, uh, you can use that food uh, at Shaggy's Porta Kitchens. Uh, and you can cook it to make health medals. So uh, I touched it, uh, and I'll, it'll be in the VOD Master. I touched on it in the tutorial level. Um, I recommend grabbing two pieces of food there that you turn into your fourth health medal. Um, and then I recommend there's a few spots I grab uh, food uh, for the fifth, if you're looking to get the fifth. Uh, and that carrot can be one of them. Um, I forget how many you need for the fifth medal. but um, And then I would put, get the fifth medal usually right before I go up to fight Caveman, uh, which is the boss of this world. So yeah, the intended way here is to grab onto these hooks, swing, and jump. Um, but again, you're gonna have times where these hooks are just not gonna... You're not gonna catch them, you're gonna swing right past them, you're gonna come off at weird angles. Uh, they are gonna be your worst nightmare. 100% um, guaranteed. Um, then just follow the Scooby Snacks. Um, we do get to do some cool tricks through here, including a uh, the only intentional butt slide in the run. Um, is coming up here. So first things first, we're gonna jump. You can just jump under that poison jet. Um, jump up here and grab onto the ladder. Um, you can do a little skip here that I've been doing. Um, I don't know if it saves time. I think it does if you do it right. 
Um, so those trampolines, the awning trampolines, take some time to activate. So the intended way here is to slide down this rope onto the trampoline, but you can land on this um, leaf, um, which, uh, a word of caution there, where it does that uh, explosion of leaves, the platform will disappear during that, so you cannot stand on those forever. Um, so stand on them and get off of them. Um, but you can jump up and grab on and slide down that uh, rope, or you can just jump out for this trampoline, and if you land right out here on the edge, instead of in the middle, you won't bounce on it, and then you can uh, jump over to the platform without the long time it takes to bounce and fall down. You're going to jump up these, you're probably going to have to wait for a poison cycle. If you fall, it's no big deal, there is a elevator right here that takes you up to the top. Um, but I think you can uh, beat that poison cycle if you manage to not bounce on the trampoline. Um, I've come really close. Um, I do think it's possible. And then just move on to the next room. This is the real awful one. This one you do have to use the hooks. And you have to use them twice. So don't get hit by the poison. Hopefully you don't miss the hooks. You probably will several times when learning. And several times when on good pace too. Um, also, if you time this just poorly enough, um, the poison will hit you and th like launch you off at weird angles. It can actually be used for some speed boost, but it's really risky and I don't recommend it. Um, you will need 25 Mubber by the time you get up to a point here later. Um, so I sometimes collect these in the box right there, but you don't have to. Um, the intention here is to jump up and uh, climb across this thing up here, but this is the fun butt slide. Um, butt slides off of platforms uh, let Scooby have mystical powers. So what I, uh, the intentional butt slide here is you're going to run to the edge of the platform and just butt slide. Um, and you'll butt slide on midair, and then you can do a double jump right out to these leafs and just jump up them. You need single jumps to get up them. Uh, with this trampoline, if you don't want to end up in an awful, horrible death that it gets clipped and you get make, made fun of for, don't touch the jump button here. Just let the trampoline do its thing. It will get you up to the next trampoline and you won't hit that poison jet. If you touch the jump button, you're likely to jump right into that uh, poison jet and get screwed. Does Mubber carry over between worlds? No, it doesn't even carry over between levels. So Mubber sticks within levels themselves. Um, so there are some boxes right here for Mubber and uh, an extra Scooby snack to fill one of your health medals. So if you're, not, if you're not at 25 at this point, you can grab those and you can grab these. You can also kill the rats if you need. And then we're going to do a fun skip down here. Um, I think you missed most of this master. You saw a little bit of it with the launch, but the karate costume is broken in Scooby. So we're going to build our karate costume and then you're supposed to do a little enemy gauntlet where you have to kill all the enemies to move on. We're just going to jump kick over to the elevator right past them. We're going to wait for that to go out of our way and just fall down. We're going to ignore all those enemies. You're going to walk into this corner right here. And it's going to take a little experimentation to find the right angle. But you're going to walk into the corner. Hold kind of like right and a little bit down. And then punch. And uh, when you get the angle right, Scooby's just going to go right on through that gate. Like it doesn't even exist. Um, <laughs> the Kung Fu costume is broken. It's... It was always what we used to skip a lot of bits of the old stage of the uh, World 1. And then we got the launch, which is even more broken. But Scooby can just punch through walls with the karate costume. Um, it's really, really, really broken. <laughs> um, and that is that is level 2 of uh, the museum. Um, it's honestly the worst level. Um, it's the most likely level to uh, ruin your run. Again, just mash through on those uh, uh, clues. And then follow the Scooby Snacks on to the third level. Um, so all you need to do here to open the third level is just hit this shark. So just jump up and hit it and roll into the third level. This level is actually really straightforward. We do a minor skip or two. Uh, but for the most part, this is really, really straightforward. Um, you need 10 Mubber for the Robin Hood costume. It's literally right here. And in this box is a Scooby Snack if you want uh, some extra health. Um, that's something I didn't touch on on health either, and I'm going to touch on right now while I'm thinking about it. Um, all the individual Scooby Snacks you collect, like these guys floating out here, add to your Scooby Snack total. 
And if you get a box of Scooby Snacks, that gives you 100 if you don't already have 100. Um, when you get 100, it will refill one of your health medals. And uh, it'll store one for later. So right now I have four health medals. And I essentially have a fifth health medal right now. Um, because when I lose one of these, it'll be instantly replenished by these 100. It'll use them all up and it'll instantly replenish it. Um, you can only have 100 at a time. Uh, so you only can kind of stockpile one extra metal, um, per se. Um, but it's just something that confused the crap out of me when I first started running, because I took a hit, and then I didn't take damage for it, and I was confused as to why. And it's because that hundred kind of refills you. Um, so go ahead and get your, um, mubber and your snack if you want it, and, uh, get your Robin Hood costume. The first time we actually use this costume in the game. As I said, it's incredibly slow. There's no fast form of movement with this. You just mosey along and when you hold the x button you'll get this plunger arrow um so there's a strat um that's a little faster here where you can jump down onto that turtle and he'll move back and forth uh but you can jump down onto onto him before you shoot the target here i recommend just shooting the target first um there's a much less chance of screwing it up and falling into this uh electrified water um and that's one thing i'm going to say with this stage if you fall into that electrified water, you come back to the beginning. Um, and it is major time loss. Uh, well, I think technically you come back to the last checkpoint that you hit, but most of the time that's the beginning and it's massive time loss. So do whatever you can not to fall in the electrified water. Um, once you hit the target, skip the cutscene, jump out onto the turtle, and then jump up onto the platform. Um, this next little skip does not save as much time as I thought it did. Um, so if you're not getting it consistently, just do this casually. So casually you would ride this turtle that's right here. Um, so you would ride this turtle uh, along here. Uh, you can just jump, double jump over the pipe to the next turtle. The turtle's like right underneath that Scooby snack. Or you can jump onto the platform and onto the uh, turtle and he'll like kind of give you a ride over and then you can jump on the jellyfish. What we do in the speedrun usually, and it is a little risky, it's not as bad as some late falls in the water, but is you're going to jump onto the turtle and then jump onto, let me get the pointer back, jump onto the turtle and then jump onto the corner of this pipe. And it'll kind of give you a launch forward and then you can jump onto that jellyfish. But it can be finicky, so do at own risk. Um, so we're going to jump onto the turtle, jump out right there, and then do a double jump onto that jellyfish. It's finicky, though. Um, as I said, I recommend trying it a bit and deciding whether you're comfy doing it in a run um, before you actually do it. Um, you want to eventually get to doing it, but it's it can be really frustrating when you're starting off. Uh, just hit this guy real quick and hit this target, and then you can just jump straight on out. Um, we're going to do a little skip here as well. If you... Um, if you jump out onto this big platform where these, this pterodactyl is, there's a cutscene you're going to have to skip. Um, once you jump onto this, the camera's going to do some weird things. So you're going to hold straight up. As soon as you land on it, just hold straight up and double jump, and you should make it out onto one of these leaves. Um, and then you're going to jump again uh, as the pterodactyls land, and that'll prevent the cutscene from happening. Uh, if you're going for the fifth health medal, you can collect an extra, uh, there's an eggplant up here that you can collect for food to use for the medal. So you're going to jump out onto this, hold up, and left, sorry, up and left, and then do a jump right as that guy lands, and you'll avoid the cutscene. Um, if you get the cutscene, it's no big deal, but it will move you over there onto that platform, which is a little frustrating. But you can grab the eggplant, head over here, and then um, the intention is to jump down on that moving platform. But we're going to just jump across the pipe. It's not that hard. Um, just land in the middle of the pipe and just jump again as soon as you land. Um, there's not really a good way to skip this cutscene, so just trigger it. And then walk right past him. And jump up these leaves. And onto the moving platform. Uh, these tentacles. <laughs> um, so when you jump on these tentacles, you bounce. Which is slow. If you're feeling frisky, if you jump all the way out on the tip of them this will not cause them to bounce so you can if you're feeling adventurous um i just screwed that up 
So yeah, you can see how much progress I just lost by falling in the uh, electrified water. Um, you lose a lot if you fall in there. So try to avoid that whenever possible. But I'm going to show you what that looks like if you if you want to avoid the bounces, which is the fastest way to do this. I recommend not when you're starting off, but you can just barely touch these guys and jump out. And then you'll also have the shrimp here um, to collect only if you're going for the extra metal of health. Um, you can only shoot the first two targets from here. So go ahead and shoot them. Um, the third one just won't work. Uh, don't get hasty with this like I just did. There's no added speed to jumping on it early. Uh, shoot the third target, and then if you're feeling frisky, you can just jump straight out to that platform. Or you can jump onto the one you're intended to and jump out here, and it's a lot safer. Um, jump out, get that clue, um, and jump up here, and fall down the hole. Uh, we get a quick little auto-scroller here. You can skip the cutscene. Um, you're supposed to shoot, uh, shoot these blimps with B or X. You don't actually need to shoot any of them. Uh, and if you move up to the top, you can just avoid basically everything. Uh, the green planes will hit you and will cause you to have to restart this, so do not hit the green planes. Everything else, well, the blimps as well, but the big planes, like you see over there, are not solid at all, and you can run into them as much as you want. Uh, but yeah, you can just chill out at the top here, uh, moving left and right as you need to avoid those green planes. And then this plane right here, where the plane's in the middle, you do have to duck under it and shoot one blimp. And then you go back up to the top, and you can just chill in the left corner until this is over. Um, yeah, this is a nice little uh, break from the rest of the run. And then we get to this last part, uh, where we're going to do yet another skip. Um, can I get my camera, please? All right, apparently not. Um, so you're supposed to hit all of the octopus's eyes with plungers, uh, which raises his four tentacles up into a stair step. Um, and I can't get the camera to cooperate, so you're not going to see it until I get out there. But um, what, you were, what we're going to do is we're only going to raise one tentacle. Um, so you're going to jump out. Whoops. Not like that. So we're going to jump out, collect that clue, and then we're going to wait until we're uh, in the right spot. We're going to charge up an arrow, hit the third eye, and then we're going to kind of leap a faith out where it's going to come up. So we're going to collect this. We're going to ignore the first eye and the second eye. We're going to jump over this pipe, we're going to jump over the next pipe, and then start charging up a plunger. Fire it off into the third eye, and jump right out. If you miss it, you're going to have to put up the second or the first tentacle. Um, you can try the second. If you can get the second, you can do second to third and up to the cage. If you miss that, then you're going to probably need the first one. Uh, once you're up here, you're supposed to need one more step to the right here. Um... So there's supposed to be a tentacle right here. And there's an invisible wall in front of you, like right here in this section. But if you jump out to the right a little bit, uh, like a little bit past this eyeball, and then just angle up towards the cage, uh, you can just kind of brute force your way up there to the cage. So you bounce, you angle that way, you do a double jump, and then you angle back towards the cage. And that will let you get up to them without having to raise all four tentacles. Alrighty, on to every runner's favorite boss in this game. Um, one thing that does suck about this run is this This is the, the boss of World 3. It's not the final boss of the game. Uh, oh, before that. Uh, this is where you haven't seen this because we've skipped World 1 and World 2, but we have to, um, we have to solve the mystery. So... You rapidly hit the A button to get through her, like, showing her the new clues. And then we have to present her the clues in the right order, which I have such trouble with sometimes. Um, so it's the bone, then the contract, then the tripod. If you mash A too many times, she'll start telling you you're wrong, and it's hard to get off of the thing and move on to the next one. So it's that, then the contract, then the tripod. And then she'll say, she'll say you solved the mystery. Um, if you're gonna go five medals, which I recommend, um, this is the time you want to go over to Shaggy's Porta Kitchen right here. Hit the B button. Give him your food. Um, I don't think I actually collected enough. I'll show you a couple other spots you can get food. Um, oh, we did collect enough. Okay. So it takes three pieces of food to 
get the second medal, that, or the fifth medal, I should say. Takes two to get the fourth, three to get the fifth. Um, so yeah, you can give him your collected food there and get your fifth medal. Um, and that'll help you out in Caveman a bunch. Uh, but if, if you're happy with four medals or three medals, whatever you're running, or if you uh, have gotten it, you can come up here. We can again do this stupid jump off the railing to save a little bit of time, or we can come around and do the intended way, where we just jump off this um, onto the Saturn, onto Saturn. But yeah, the fastest way is to come up here, jump off the railing. Don't, don't fall. Jump off the railing and jump onto the planet. Jump up onto this planet. Be, be careful here. You can waste a lot of time if you fall down. Uh, this lobster is basically impossible to grab. You'll often hear us go lobster for luck because, you know, why else would we grab the lobster? It's RNG manipulation. And then we go on to Caveman. Um, caveman, Caveman, Caveman. Caveman is basically pure RNG. Um, it is the worst controlling boss I have ever participated in. Um... No, no problem, Sam. I'm glad you got Chimney Jump. Um, Caveman is the worst controlling boss ever for whatever reason, and it makes no sense, even if you actually watch the cutscenes, it makes no sense. We're about to play bumper cars in UFOs in an electrified arena. I don't understand it. But um, you're going to skip this cutscene normally. I'm just going to let it play while I kind of talk. Um, the goal is to bump him into the wall as much as possible. There's a couple items that can show up. Lasers are always good. Um, when you're first starting out, force fields are also pretty good. Um, pretty much everything else sucks. So here's a laser. It's red. Pick it up and fire them off at him. Uh, I got another laser. Can I please not waste all my good RNG on this tutorial? I hate this. Oh my god, the tutorial's gonna be straight lasers, isn't it? Holy sh... You know... My, my PB had a really crappy caveman, and now I get lasers. If you don't have lasers, you can damage him by shoving him into the wall. Um, that blue field around me means I have a force field. He'll often get one as well. Um, this is a big game of shove him into the wall. Avoid those hanging wires. They will hurt you. Um, and in the final round, he gets an unlimited use laser, which is so unfair. Okay, at least the stupid RNG with all of the lasers has died off. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to talk about some of the items before I kill him off here. So yeah, you've got the force field. Um, another item you can pick up, and you can stack these force fields. Another item you can pick up is this mine. I hate these things. I don't really use them much. Um, whoops. And yeah, whatever you pick up will overwrite the last item. Uh, except the force fields. Force fields will stick around. And you can jump with A button to kind of... I don't know. I have trouble controlling in here. You just kind of have to play around with this to get a feel for how to control this. The camera whips around a bunch. Uh, it's It can be finicky. Um, oh, we're on the final round because he uh, he ran into the wall. So um, you can jump over his uh, laser beams that he gets. So I want a force field right now because I'm kind of low on them. Um, okay, here's the deep freeze. I didn't get a chance to show the mines off yet. But the deep freeze, when you activate it... Why did I lose my deep freeze? When you activate the deep freeze, um, Caveman kind of... He starts slip sliding around with no control for himself, so he'll just keep going in whatever direction he's sliding in. I wish it would give me more deep freezes so I could show them. Um, you can get some really nice long things of damage with the deep freeze if you can push him into a wall and have him like skirt along it. Um, well, I guess we'll do electro mines since we have them. These drop with the B button. Um, they can hurt you just as easily as they can hurt him. Um, so you do need him to uh, hit them, you know, and not be uncooperative. I have plenty of lasers here. I could finish them off easy. We are going to restart this, though, so I can show you the deep freeze as well. Um, I'd say probably the most useful items to see are lasers always. Uh, deep freeze and force fields, in my opinion, are the second best things to see. Um, deep freeze, probably. Like, one deep freeze and a force field or two, um, just to kind of give you safety. Especially if you're running on lower life. And then... Uh, I hate seeing the mines. The mines are not useful to me. I almost never actually deploy them. Or if I do, I end up running into them. Um, I'm sure some people are good with the mines. I am crap with them. Um, so yeah, we climb up the planets again. Be careful not to fall. 
And then we're just going to try and do this battle for real. I'll try and point out when I use the deep freeze. Um, but yeah, seeing red is good, seeing anything else is bad, pretty much. Um, and again, you just kind of want to... It's, it's hard, because he'll jump at... Like, he's good at dodging you. And, like, the camera whips around based on his movement and yours. And it's just like... This takes a lot of time to get used to. Here's a deep freeze. So we deep freeze him. You'll see he stops having control of himself. And then if we hit him, he'll kind of like slide like he's on ice. And there's a timer counting down as to how long it'll last. We got laser beams, though. I don't know if rapid firing the laser beams is any better than spacing them. I space them out so that I make sure their damage actually like takes. But I don't know if that actually matters. Um, I don't know if anybody in the chat that's floating around knows. Um... There was a deep freeze here. There it is. So we can deep freeze him again, and if you can get a good hit, which I did not there, you can kind of get him to skirt along the edge and keep taking damage. There we go, like that. Um, except he bounced off on me. We'll pick up some of these mines, I guess. Yeah, he's pretty good at dodging them, and I'm pretty bad at dodging them. So, like, I usually don't bother. Final round, again, you can jump over his laser beam shots if you time it right. Ideally, you just get your own laser beams and then, like, hit him into the wall once or twice. And you'll be done with Caveman. But yeah, this fight can take forever if RNG is not with you. Um, it's very easy to die if you're on low health and you don't get force fields. Um, but that that's the end of World 3. And then all we have left now is uh, our return to Monstrous Fright and Magic, and uh, we'll be done. Um, and the final boss, of course. And after the after I finish this off, I think I'm going to do a run. Um, I want to de-rust a little, try and take Baz's crown away from him. Um, and if anybody uh, wants to see the run, Master, if you want to float around, it's like a 30-something minute run, so um, you can see it. So here you're just going to roll... Um, it's pretty much the same as when we were here originally in this stage, except now there's this electrified water. Oops. Um, I thought I hit jump. Apparently I did not. Sometimes you'll get a glitchy thing, too, if you roll at just the wrong time when he's throwing a, uh, a shur shuriken? shuriken at you. Um, but this is exactly the same motions. Hit the button, open the door. We just don't have to collect the clue first. Um, there's just enemies now. Um, we're gonna roll on down. Just keep rolling. Uh, here has changed slightly. You cannot... Uh, the zip line is gone, so you can't zip line. So you gotta jump out onto this. Jump onto this. And then jump over. Um, you can sometimes get hyper speed on that corner, too, of that platform. This has not changed. Except instead of food here, it's a Scooby snack. If you need it to refill health, just don't get hit in the process. Or you kind of waste it. There is a little uh, trick we can do here that we can't do the first time. Um, you get one shot at it. Um, in this box, right here, is a ninja. If you run up to him, and as, after he, right after he breaks out of the box, you do a normal jump onto his head. And then keep holding forward, do a double jump, and do a pound. And you can get up onto uh, the ledge up here on the right and then go over and hit the button uh, without having to do the box jump. If you miss the ninja jump, you can just do the same box jump we did when we were here uh, in the beginning of the game. So you jump on his head, jump again, do a pound, and you can end up up here. If you miss it, uh, you might get really lucky where he's in a spot where you can do it again. But most of the time, he'll move out of the way, and you're just... That, that was your shot, and you missed it. Um, at that point, you can either... Uh, in fact... Now there's barrels here, so you can just jump up here, pound your way onto these guys, and then jump across onto the ledge. Um, or you could do it off the cardboard box if that makes you uh, happier because it's the same exact jump you did when you were here in the beginning of the game. I find it so much harder off the box than off those barrels, though. Okay. Um, and then you're just going to come on over here, hit the button. Uh, there is a little bit of added change here. Instead of just going up to the top here, we now have to go up to the top and do a little platforming with hooks. 
um, everybody's favorite hooks. Um, so if you try to go straight, oh my god, camera, there's a doorway that's closed, and we gotta hit a button over there to trigger it. So once you're up here, you're gonna jump onto this platform, jump out to the hook, don't get hit by the poison, and hopefully the hook cooperates, and the second, yep, and that's what hooks do, um, and that's why we hate them. Um, sometimes you just, for whatever reason, don't grab the hook, even though you're positive you grabbed the hook. Um, Scooby just ignores it. There we go. Okay. Uh, right here you got a little trolley platform, oh my god, to the right, that will drop out from under you. So if you see it up, it's worth waiting for it to come, uh, to drop and come back up before you do, uh, jump on it. Hit the button to open the door, zip back on across, and then just go back to doing your rolls. Um, there's an extra Scooby Snack at the bottom of here if you need a health refill off on the left. You're going to roll forward, kill all the enemies. You can do this with ground pounds or rolls, whichever is more comfy for you. Um, the rolls roll into as many of them as possible at once. Uh, the ground pounds, same thing. You ground pound on two on the left and two on the right in whatever order you want. Uh, and then we're going to skip straight to the boss. Um, we're at the final boss. Uh, this is done in three phases. Each one uses one of the costumes. Um, the first phase is extremely dull. Um, but I'm very good at screwing up the shots into his mouth for some reason. Um, so you're going to go immediately to the right as fast as you can. Just roll. And activate the costume machine and get your costume. Um, you're going to want to move out to about here. Um, let him blow fire, move out to here, charge up a plunger, and put it in. If you hit him with a plunger, move to the right, let him breathe, get another plunger, and go. If you miss, he's going to do two rounds of fire before you can shoot him again. So I'll show you that here. So if you miss, you know, like I tend to do sometimes, and do something like that, you're getting two rounds of fire um, before you can hit him in the mouth again. And that's it. That's that's all there is to this. Uh, second round is just gliding. Um, here you want to just do circles. Just slow circles with your control stick. Uh, if you stay high, you can kind of get him to go off screen uh, if you get lucky. There we go. He'll go off screen before he finishes that round. Um, these arrows are identical every time. Uh, there's no downs required until the very last maneuver of the whole thing. So uh, staying at the top is always safe. And then you just gotta shift right and left. Um, you have plenty of time, but that those patterns don't change. Uh, if I ever get this into like a game's done quick or something, if I ever attempt to submit this there, uh, I'm gonna try and learn this fight blindfolded because almost all of this fight can be done blindfolded. In fact, I think the whole thing can. Um, this portion definitely can, it does not change. You just gotta make sure you memorize the patterns. All right, again, left. And if you stay at the top, you're good until the very end, and that's a down. And you'll know it's coming, because, as I said, these patterns don't change. And there's your down, and then you can mash A and B to get past the cutscene. Uh, final phase. Um, you already start in costume. Now, you can do a trick um, where you kind of stun lock him. Um, the fastest way to do this fight is to hit this lamp into him which stuns him, and then start doing him your Kamehameha blast things. But those rats can sometimes become a problem. So what I usually recommend is coming straight on over, maybe stunning him with this, I do stun him with this usually, but coming over here to this machine, the rats can't hit you here. And then you just need to, uh, yeah, see. If he gets the hit the ground, then he can stun you. Uh, if you can time these just right, you can just kind of keep a stream of them going and you won't get hurt by his blasts. Um, if you have enough health, you can kind of just damage through it anyway. And then time is right at the end of this screen here when you hit the A button. And that's your time. And your run is done. Um, so that is an up-to-date <laughs> tutorial of Scooby-Doo Unmasked Any Percent. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything I missed there. I think I covered pretty much everything. Um, you know, we had some input from some of the other runners. I think we're going to do a run, though. Um... So, and I'll probably break these up into two separate VODs, um, but I will reference the run, too. 
So if anybody has any questions, you can still throw them at me during the run. But uh, yeah, we're going to try an actual run. Um, so if you want to see that, just stick by and we're going to do that.